Hi guys, my name is Zin and uh, this is going to be Bonsai. Um, today we're going to look at a ficus that I have. It is the the small leaf or the little leaf one. And uh, I wired this in the, I think the spring or in the summer sometime. And as you can see the wires are bite, biting in already. Um, this tree is so small that I don't really notice it growing. But obviously it has grown because the, the wires are biting in. So I need to remove the wires and maybe apply more and then give it a bit of pruning. So um, I'm not sure if I need to wire it again or not, but first of all, I need to get these off and uh, do some pruning. And the wires batting in for tropicals or for ficus at least is uh, they don't come out that easily. Um, yesterday we visited a club member and he has a lot of ficuses it was just like rows of ficus and he had, he had a lot of these uh, small leaf species and uh, you know some of it has double sized leaves these leaves are actually too small right now they're supposed to be bigger normally um, and then he had you can still see the wire marks on some of the more mature trees that he has from uh, from before so and he was telling us how the, the, the bite marks doesn't come out that easily so it's it's good to, you know, get these wires off and make sure the marks doesn't go any deeper. Um, and another thing is that you have to be really careful on wiring for the ficus. You know, like you have to uh, kind of take them off in time in a way. So yeah, I probably should not have wired this in the uh, summer or spring. Maybe I, you know, maybe you can wire it after you bring it inside. It'll probably slow the growth down with the artificial lighting or just regular uh, lack of sunlight. So yeah, um, so that's a problem. Anyway, let's get started with that. Okay, so I'll, uh, I guess I'll remove from the top uh, whatever I, I think is the easiest for now. These are aluminum wires, so they're quite easy to remove. And especially these are are so thin so it will be even easier to to get rid of but nonetheless even though these are small wires and they're not that hard the uh, the branches still get bite marks come on yeah it's not the easiest thing to remove wires either I find it difficult to put it on and uh, a little bit difficult to remove as well. So these up here are mostly new growth of the year, I think. Uh, I don't think before it was this tall, not even close, uh, which is there's no wires on there as well. So I'll take try to get rid of this one. Oops. There it goes. So knowing that the fact that the fike is doesn't recover that well from uh, wire marks it might be a better idea to not wire it or you have to really keep close attention to to the tree um, and remove the wires when it's time to as you can see the marks right there it's actually uh, quite deep it's almost as, as thick as the wire itself actually I think it is as thick as the wire itself so yeah I, I definitely removed these a little too late um, the tree is so small, I, I, I just didn't notice that it was growing that much. Um, but, you know, obviously it had definitely grown. So let's try to get rid of this wire on the trunk. 
But on a positive note, at least the tree is, uh, the branches are holding in their position. So that's really good. Wow, these marks are really big. <laughs> Happy to see that soon. Oops. See, I'm not sure if I'm clumsy or it's just, I'm not very uh, agile, but I keep kind of having trouble with, see, look at that leaf came off. I have trouble with the branches, I always kind of get caught in it. Uh, oh. So the moss was put on afterwards and that's why the wires go deeper in and there's a, there's a, like a coil, a, a one, one coil underneath the moss. And that's why I, I was having trouble getting, getting it out. So you can see the bite marks, they are uh, quite severe. Um, all I can do is hope that it will uh, heal up, <laughs> um, but you know they're, they're quite significant. The branch down here, which I'm not sure, I forgot how deep this goes, but I think this could be a lower branch. In the top of the tree, I might be able to take back. So we'll do a little pruning. First, um, we'll start with the bottom. So I'll take this. I'll take this branch, or at least this one, back to the first leaf. I gotta be careful here. So this scissors actually I want to it was uh, it was kind of loose like this it was it was wobbling a lot and what I did was I I hammered this in more uh, which makes it tight so now it's not even it's not even moving it does give more resistance when you when you do this um, but I think before it was the space was too much so that the the, the blades were was wobbling and when I try to cut in the uh, tip of the blade it was not sometimes it wouldn't cut that well. So that's, that's why I did that. I didn't want it to wobble too much. Um, anyway, let's uh, get back to this. So this branch, I'll take it back to this. And then this bottom branch, I think I will wire it more. Um, actually, I'm, I'm thinking of taking this whole thing off here. If I get rid of this big one, I'll go with the small one, I'll get some taper, and it's going towards this side. I think when I made this, this, this is the front of the tree, I think. Um, yeah. Even though the tree is kind of going away from you, uh, right out of the trunk, but. So I'll do that, I'm gonna take this whole thing off. I'll leave a little stub there, um, right there for dieback. I'll let it die back naturally and then uh, clip it off later on. So what is this here? Okay, that's a side branch. There's a side branch coming from this main branch at the bottom there, which I will try to take off. There it goes. This back branch, um, I think is fine. I, I want the leaf over here to go this way. So I don't think I'll do anything with that. What I'll do is I'll take this big leaf off.
So that's fine, I'll leave that to grow. And then there's a branch kind of coming towards us. I will take that back. Uh, to here. I'll let that grow. Now at the top of the tree, um, I'm trying to figure out where to cut. I think I'm going to cut it here, cut it right, right there. So basically this whole top is gone out and I'll, this here will be my new leader. Um, that way you get some taper and then this thing is also coming out kind of in the right direction. Yeah, this is nice growth, but I think I think that's what that's what I that's what I want. I I could take this as a new leader as well, but I think I, I want more taper, so I'm gonna do that. So yeah, I could make this the leader, but I, I think that the section between here and here it's too straight and too long, and I want more tapered, so I I'll take that as the new leader. Okay. And then this branch, I'll take that as a new branch and let that go. So, yeah, the tree is back to a very, very uh, simple and small, small tree with not that many leaves. Okay, so there's no, there's not going to be repotting today. Um, this I put this in here. I think uh, this year. Um, I think before the summer, I, I, f I forgot when I, when, I, when I did it, but I'll let this grow and uh, hopefully everything develops in the right direction. The weather is getting cold now. Um, we're getting low teens at night, so I think very soon I will have to move all my tropicals indoors. Uh, and uh, eventually, you know, it'll get cold enough to, to where I have to move some of the deciduous into, into the garage. Anyway, so that's it for the pruning, and um, so we'll go see some of the new trees that I got. And uh, yeah, yesterday uh, I was at the club, club, club member's house, and he gave me some free trees. <laughs> Actually, just before you go to the updates, um, I recently been to a senior member of the club, and uh, he had all our boxwoods, so he's got some good beginner advice. So I'll show you that first, and then we'll do the updates. So as you can as you can see, there's a lot of boxwoods here, uh, the entire two walls of boxwoods. Um, so how long have you been working on these boxwoods? Uh, some of them I've been doing since about 93, 94. Some of them much later. 93, 94, that's over 20, almost 30 years. Pretty much. A yes. very long time. So you know a lot about boxwoods. <laughs> yeah, I've been doing boxwoods for a while. They're a very easy um, variety to work with. They are adaptable to most styles. As you can see, we have yep. literati in the top right. Over here, there's literati, mm -hmm. there's cascade. Yep. There's um, that one there so is semi, um, semi cascade. Oh, Just leaning, informal up, uprights. Lots of different varieties. Room style. Yes, you yep. can. They're adaptable to most styles. Yeah. They're very tough. You can. They take well to pot culture. The root pruning is um, very easy. You can take a lot of roots off and they still survive. The one thing about boxes is they're very slow growing and they take a long while to grow. And how, how hardy are these? Very hardy, just put them in the ground and they're like hedge, they're hedge material. Right. So they, they're pretty good. They don't require a whole bunch of sunlight. They, they can accept a lot of sunlight, full sun to half sun to almost I'm a very shady backyard so these guys get um you know like 30% sun yeah if if that if that yeah so. okay well um so on a pot like this how often would you repot this boxwood oh well, i usually do them every 2 years two, two years is 2 that, years or like 3 a, years depends on how much time you have yeah if you let's say if you have you know 
unlimited amount of time, how, how often would you repot them? Two to like three years. Two to three years, eh? Pot, boxwoods actually don't mind being a bit root bound. So if you see itself, if you see the tree pushing itself out of the pot, like this one, it's time to repot. Right. Because <laughs> the roots actually are growing and the roots are pushing the, 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 you know, the whole tree out of the pot. Right. So that's a clear sign of... Uh... That's a sign that you need to do it. Okay. And then when you repot them, and uh, what, do you, what do you do? Do you bare root them or do you... Uh... I usually bare root them, yes. Some people may not, but I've been doing boxwoods for 30 years and yeah. I always bare root them. Okay. And then you, have you ever had any trouble with the bare root or is there's nope. no, nothing, nope. nothing happens? I've which is the, pretty much the only variety which I have not lost, you know, more than 10%, if that. Okay. Um, so box was, how, how hard can you prune them? Uh, you know, when, let's say you have a, let's say you, you buy a hedge material from, from the nursery. How much would you, like, can you just chop them right down and let them grow? Yes. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah. I've taken off, I've bought boxes that were like foot and a half high and taken it down to to about eight to ten inches. Eight to ten as well. <laughs> Which no, that's 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 extreme. Most times it's just half that, but or like it's, you know, you know, you like if you buy a two foot tree, it'll go down to a foot more than likely. Right. But I have taken stuff down to. So would you say this? Eight inches. Would you say the box was is a is a very good material for for beginners? It's pretty good. Uh, bonsai has to be believable as a tree, and because the foliage is so small and the leaves are so small. It lends itself very well to being in a pot, and it looks believable. Right. So I like boxwoods. It's actually, it's my favorite tree. And it's tough to kill, and it's yeah. kind of easy to handle, right? Yep. There's another style. It's a clump clump style. Clump so style, there there's different yeah. styles. There's this yeah. one is a broom style. Yeah, I think I think you have every style that's here. That's uh, <laughs> for bonsai. <laughs> almost. That's almost um, a formal up, upright. Right. And many informal uprights. Yeah. The formal upright, they're they're all have to be like perfectly straight up. Kind of, I, I heard yes, that's the hardest style yes, you can do. Yes, because most trees we try not to want them straight. The formal upright, you do want them straight, but right. you also want them balanced. Yeah. So this is the closest I have to a formal Sorry. upright. Okay. Wow, lots of trees here. There's a few. Yeah. So if there's one tip you want to give for a, a box with for a beginner, what would you say? Start one. Start. <laughs> or okay. two or three. But, okay. Yeah, they will take time, so you can start them, but you don't have to work on every tree all the time. Just you prune them and then you let them grow. Right, and then um, uh, and then get other trees to play with. <laughs> if you're waiting for a boxwood to grow so you can prune it again, it's like watching paint dry. <laughs> um, and then would you, um, let's say for for someone that wants to wants these to thicken up faster or grow faster, would you recommend them? Put them, putting these in the ground and put these in the ground. Yes, it's the only yeah. way you're gonna thicken up a boxwood, and <laughs> even so, it's gonna take forever. Oh, oh yeah, okay. Some like that's been in the pot for 25 years, and it was pretty much the same size when I when I got it. Oh, okay. So, so I guess they don't thicken up that they fast. They don't thicken eh? up almost at all. Okay, so put them in the ground, let them put grow. Them the ground. Best place to get them is an old hedge. Okay. Preferably get permission before you dig it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Okay, well, uh, thanks for the uh, advice. I'm sure a lot of people can use it. You're so, very welcome. Yeah. So yesterday I was at a very senior club member's house and he had these buckthorns. This is a buckthorn, very big twin trunk buckthorn. And basically he was throwing them out. Um, he just didn't want them anymore and uh, he was trying to sell it before. Nobody bought it and then eventually he just kind of threw it out, tossed it aside of the uh, of his massive backyard <laughs> and then he was growing basically just where it was sitting um, so I took him, I took these two or one, I don't know, however you want to call it and uh, Nigel took one as well which I'll show you, actually Nigel took two but I, I had to carry one back to my house because his car wouldn't fit both of them <laughs> so it's quite old and it's quite big, I don't know what the root base looks like and then it's got these um, lilies, which I kind of ripped them off, growing on the side. I don't know how long this has been sitting there. But the buckthorn supposedly is very hardy. Uh, you can just leave it outside in the winter, but I'm not going to. Um, I'm going to take it inside because, you know, you can see there's a lot of branches die back. And uh, 
I don't know if that's due to overwintering or something else but you know these guys are no good anymore which means I'm not gonna have any lower branches I don't know if anything will shoot out in the future either so I'm just gonna focus on growing the top of the tree and there's a lot of dead wood on here which I'm, I'm told the buckthorn wood is it's quite sturdy that are uh, more rot resistant so I'm not gonna cut some of these off these old ones I'll leave it there um, but some of the small tweaks I'll, I'll, I'll get rid of there's a lot of these trees this is already pruned back by the way you can see this is just freshly pruned this was much much bigger before I had to prune it back just to fit into my car and that uh, there's some kind of a like a fungus I guess that's on there right now but that's just this year I think once you know next year uh, it'll, it'll go away hopefully you know there's some of these so it still needs a lot of pruning there's a lot of twigs that are dead and then the branches are kind of chaotic they go they're just like going everywhere and um, I think I'm just gonna prune this off camera it's just I think it's gonna take a long time it's really big so there's I'm not I won't be able to get that many uh, good angles if I if I made a video of it uh, so I think I'll just prune it and then eventually show show the result and next year this has been in the soil for a long time so I think it will be safe for me to repot this next year I need to get rid of that thing over there and then this branch I don't even I'm pretty sure I'm gonna take this off it's just like a straight branch or maybe I'll, uh, I'll I'll prune it and see if any new growth come out and I can develop it maybe anyway that's the it's a big update it's a big tree it's currently sitting in a, in a great box I don't even have pots this big to fit the uh, the tree so I think what I'll have to do is make one of these grow boxes and then just for this tree <laughs> so I could keep it uh, so let's take a look at Nidus tree he has another one this is the uh, this is the second one that he wanted the the other tree that he has is uh, is much taller and then I think has a better trunk and everything so as you can see this is also a kind of a twin to quad trunk but this died that died and the one in the back that are also died and I think I don't know when these died like I don't know if they died because of it was sitting outside and not getting enough water or or uh, you know whatever else reason but you can see the tree has sh shot up some branches from the bottom there's also a lot of dead branches and tweaks on this tree um, wow yeah it's quite hazardous <laughs> it's called a buckthorn but there's no actual thorns on the tree even though the wood is quite sharp and I caught myself a few times already on, on, on these trees moving them uh, into my car so I don't know if he uh, wants to keep these branches or not keep these branches but uh, not sure if you leave me a comment I can prune some of these off if you want but this is a side that's growing well so again this branch nothing is coming out of it but maybe next year something might you never know and uh, yeah this is just branches going everywhere this one's coming it's coming from the bottom there there's a couple branches coming from the bottom and then going up here I think this should come up, come on this way there we go now you get some yeah yeah drooping this way that's fine and then this oh, another droop gives some horizontal growth so yeah this tree I mean pretty much the whole top is not growing but oh oh and then if if Nitro doesn't pick this up this year I'll put this in the garage as well so to give it the best protection and uh, we'll see what happens with this next year maybe you'll see in his video instead because he might you might be in his house by then <laughs> so those are the two uh, big updates these two big trees um, everything else that I have is looking good nothing is dying um, these uh, Natel plum it's getting the fruit but it's it's been like that for like a couple of weeks a week at least now and it's not really doing much and I'm not sure if it's if it's gonna fruit at all or it's just gonna stay there especially because it's getting cooler and I think once I move it inside it might not the fruit might not come at all 
Um, there's some hibiscus flowers which I kind of took off. I didn't want flowers to grow. Uh, I'll do that later. So everything else is looking good. Um, I'm hoping the best for the buckthorns. So yeah, I think uh, that's all for this week. Um, the buckthorns, I, I tried to research it, but there wasn't that many results. Nigel did the same thing and uh, there wasn't too much information on it. Um, but I don't know, we'll just do club and grow and see, see what happens. <laughs> okay guys, thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you guys next time.